Sharon in the building. All right, so you reached out to me, and you have a story to tell. They pretty much left you out to dry. You're a controversial company story of Super Eagle. So let's start by how long was you was working with them before everything turned the other way around? I worked for them last year from, like, October 16th to, like, the middle of November of last year. I mean, I mean December, you know, December last year. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what, three months or so? Yeah, about three months. Okay, but within that three-month time period, you left them and then you came back to work for them as a company driver? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, I'm about to give you the floor, so let's let's hear your story. Um, Like I said, basically I was working for them. At first I came as an uh, owner-operator in uh, October. I worked for them like a month. Um, I wasn't really making no money. Um, yeah. So, um, I kind of, uh, quit for a little while. Then they said that they had hired me back as a company driver. Um, I could work under a fleet owner, um, Paul Lockett. Um, but basically we was, um, I mean, we was working for Super Ego. So um, basically I came back and I worked for them for like two and a half months. Um, yeah, like I said, I wasn't I wasn't getting paid at all. The only pay that I got was like the weekly advances that they give fifty dollars a month. I mean fifty dollars a week, once a week. Um but yeah, I pretty much drove like over the road. Um and like the truck had broke down, so I had a load in Alabama, Birmingham. Uh went there, went to the uh dealership to get it fixed and um I guess they told the repair people uh not to give me the keys back because I guess the um the guy that I was working for because they didn't pay him either. So he just said that he didn't want to lease the truck no more. So um basically I guess they told them not to give me the keys back. Um cuz I guess I don't know if they thought I was just going to abandon the truck, go home and abandon the truck or whatever, but um I was pretty much stuck, stuck in Birmingham, just stranded like I didn't have any money. I had money but I didn't have enough to get back home. Um basically I was stranded um, sleeping in the gas station, um, trying to, and, um, yeah, they stopped answering the phone calls and everything. Like I was just pretty much, yeah, stranded. Okay. So in the beginning, you, you came there to drive as a lease operator, right? Yeah. So why did you choose to give them the benefit of the doubt? Why did you thought that you can do something with them? What was your reason? Um, because like, I mean, I, I like trucking, like, you know, but I haven't been on the road in a while. So I'm like, I wanted to get back in there, you know, get back on the road. And I'm like, uh, a lot of companies, they don't probably really want to give you a chance if you ain't got that much experience. So, um, yeah, I was just like, okay, you know, they're giving me a chance. But then I kind of already knew kind of like, I mean, I was kind of getting like red flags off top, like, cause I'm like, they just rushing everything. They're not really trying to really, you know, cause usually most companies they do like background. I mean, they probably did background checks, but it was like, they just pretty much was rushing everything. Like they wasn't really strict about everything. So, um, and then, yeah. So I'm like, yeah, that's probably, I'm kind of thinking like that's a red flag. And like, I, I mean, yeah, like I said, they were just rushing everything. But I still, like I said, gave him a chance. I'm like, well, okay, I get to get back on the road. So, but um, yeah, like once I got there, it was just like everything was just confusing and being rushed, and it was just like, like, mm. and it was like they were just getting the attitude like over the little. It was like I was even scared to like ask them questions and stuff because it was like they was like getting irritated. Like, but I gave him a chance, like I said. But I kind of, kind of knew in the back of my head like it wasn't, it wasn't something wasn't right. But um, did you do your research on the company before you decided to go with them, or was or did they like constantly call you, or how how did you get wind of Super Eagle in the first place? Um, they contacted me. I think well, I think I have filled out an application. I think, uh, but yeah, they ended up calling me, and uh, I just went there. Like I said, I, I should have did my research, but I wasn't really thinking. I was just so excited to get back on the road, and I got a job, so I'm like, hey. But, um, yeah, but 
Yeah, I should have did my research. Okay, okay. So now you're in, you signed up for the lease purchase or lease agreement that they had. But in that little time span, you said that you wasn't making no money. So that what was the lows that you was getting and what was the constitute to not getting paid? Like, I know they say not to inspect much in the first couple of weeks, but what was you getting or not getting in the first couple of weeks? Cause you said you, you, you stayed there for a month and a half and then you came back for the other month and a half. So. Yeah, because at first I was, I mean, like I said, that was my first time being an owner operator. So I'm like, I really didn't know too much, you know, I was trying to learn things, you know, but uh, it was just, everything was being rushed, you know, and I mean, I kind of got some of it, but not really too much of it. Um, but then I end up going out like as a team driver with, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, we had one, we had like a couple of those. We, uh, went to like Pennsylvania. Um, but, um, yeah, but he ended up like dropping dirty and stuff. So the, he had to get, he had to let go, he had to get let go and I ended up taking over. Um, but yeah, like I said, I was trying to stick it out for, I mean, for a little bit, but then it was just like, I just felt like it was just too much. It was like, it's too many fees involved. It's like, I mean, I guess I understand, but it's like, I ain't really making no money. So that part right there where you keep saying that you're not making no money, like how much money are we not making? Um, I mean, like I said, I, I really didn't, I mean, I understood, I understood part of it, but I guess like, so they was charging us the gas and like the trailer and the truck and like, Especially, like, I guess with the load, too, like they say, you only get, like, 80%, 88% of the load. Or I guess, like they said, like, what they choose to give you or, you know. And, like, I really didn't understand all of it. I only still like part of it. But, yeah, that's kind of another reason why I quit because it was, like, it was just too much to figure out. Okay. We're still on the money, though. Like, how much you was getting per paycheck, if any? Like, I wasn't getting nothing because the truck was under my, my team driver's name. So he got like all the statements and stuff, but, um, he showed me like, um, I guess we was like, he only got like $200 or something. Cause we was like negative, like, I think like $1,900 or something. Okay. I'm confused. So you came in to get into the lease, but you went to team drive and then you yeah, took over the truck. I yeah, I came in as my I came in by myself, but then like I said, I wasn't on the road for for a while, and then like I'm like maybe he probably know a little bit more. I mean, we can help each other out, so they allowed us to be team drivers. Okay, so team drivers teaming in the truck. So how you was getting paid? I'm not understanding the pay here. I hear what you're saying. I hear that you're saying that you you wasn't getting paid and everything like that but for the first month and a half you was you was out so all the money was going to him and he was paying you or you was getting money in into your checking account like what's where where are we at here yeah all the money was going to him it's like whoever signed the lease that's who all the money goes to so i was depending on him for like even like my monthly like my weekly deposits like and I don't even really think he was giving me, giving it all to me. Like, um, so, um, so for the first month and a half, by the sounds of it, and I, I don't want to offend you or anything like that, but it just sounded like you was a co-driver for the first month. That was it. Yeah. Like you was a helper yeah. or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we both, like, we, yeah, pretty much, like, we both had our CDLs, but like I said, I was, yeah, basically like a cold driver. So, actually, the truck or the leasing aspect was through the, the main driver. You just came on as a cold driver. You ain't had nothing to do with leasing or anything like that, right? In the first, in the yeah. first month and a half. Yeah, I was kind of like a, like, co-owner. Like, he was, like, he was, like the owner but I, I mean i guess like he was the main owner but i was like the co-owner how are you a co-owner on somebody else's truck I, no because we both i mean i guess yeah like he was the main like he was the owner but i guess like i, I don't know yeah i guess like co-owner I, I don't know that's how i'm looking at it because we both was like in the lease together but i guess like he was the main oh, wait Wait, so both of your names was on the lease agreement for the truck? Well, I guess no. Then, yeah. Okay, so now that I got a better understanding of your first month and a half with the company. Okay, so... 
basically it's like a training deal that all the money goes to the to the trainer and then out of his paycheck it will funnel over to your bank whatever the whatever the amount okay so by the sounds of it the truck wasn't making no money right okay so so for that first month and a half that you was with him like what what kind of lows that you guys was getting to see that that you guys wasn't making no money for because i mean basically like they, they'll give us a load and they'll let us like negotiate like if we if, if we want to take it or not and like i said i mean he, he kind of he didn't kind of understand too like as far as the lows like we were still learning a little bit as for like what to get paid um but like I said, the check stuff that he gave me, I don't know if he had got more, but the check stuff that he showed me, we was like negative like $1,900. A team truck and y'all negative $1,900. So basically, yeah. both of y'all driving the truck for free for that first month and a half. Yeah, pretty much because all the money mostly just going to like the trailer and the truck and the gas and the insurance. I'm, I'm not trying to offend you or nothing like that, but... Both of y'all wasn't running that truck right. Yeah. How you guys was driving? Like, the team truck should never stop. I mean, we was driving. I mean, like I said, it was just really just the lows we was getting because, like, we just didn't really know, like, as far as, like, how to balance everything out. Like, I mean, we was getting to our destinations, like, on time and all that stuff, but we just didn't, like, the lows we was getting, I think it was just, like I said, we just didn't know how to really balance everything out, like... So you saying that the loads was getting there on time. So say, for example, one driver would drive its 11 hours during the day and another driver yourself would drive your 11 hours at night. That's how y'all was driving? Yeah, like half and half, yeah. But no, no, no. Is that Was well, that actually yeah. how you guys was driving? Was was you guys driving like that? I mean, it's like he'll drive some hours and then I'll drive some hours. Okay. Yeah. What do you what do you mean by some hours? Like both of y'all got eleven hours to drive. So that means you guys is not driving all your hours? No, we drove all our hours. I can't really be I mean, be specific. I don't I just know that he drove some hours and I drove some hours. Like we we just yeah. Okay. So again, like I said, you guys got eleven hours between the both of you. And let's say as far as getting a load, y'all should get a load that should accommodate the hours between you, meaning a team truck should run at least 5,800 to 6,000 miles. It's two of y'all on the truck, yeah. and a team truck supposed to continue to be rolling. I can understand that the dispatcher probably might F you on, on some loads here and there, but a team truck should not yeah. be averaging no nineteen hundred dollars a team truck should average at least at least close to 10 10k if not eight thousand dollars yeah we probably got like i said i only seen one check stub and then like i said like most of the time that i was there like i i had like it took me a, a while to even get on the road because the trucks that they had was like messed up they kept having mechanical issues like i kept having to switch out trucks and stuff so it was like towards like the end like i probably was only on the road for probably like a week like really like but i was with them like i was with them for like yeah like for like like a month like or probably like a little over a month like okay with the, with the so, operator thing okay so the first half of your time there you was teaming with a lease driver a lease slash potential owner operator of that truck and you was pretty much there just to quote unquote help but after you left you said that you left and then you came back to come back as a company yeah. driver so yeah with that company driver part right there i think you was like just being a company driver when you was with the lease op but you said you was a company driver and you was driving by yourself in somebody else's truck that was being leased through rocket right super ego right well one of their shit one of their shell companies let's put it like that yeah okay so yeah. so the bottom half of that for that month and a half that's what you were saying that you was having all sorts of issues with the truck so did yeah. you relate did you relay all that over to the owner operator of the truck yeah we had to keep switching our trucks like we switched out like maybe two or three trucks before i even got on the road because the exhaust kept overheating Okay, so back to the money aspect. Now that you're a company driver, 
did you see any money from there? And if so, how much? I didn't see nothing. Like, uh, but the only money I did with the uh, cash advance, like that we got like once a week. But other than that, I didn't see no nothing other than $50. That's it. Let me see if I understand it. So all together for, for the three months, you, you didn't see no kind of money. None. I didn't see really no, except for like the, the cash advance. That's it. I didn't see nothing. Okay. At okay. all. Okay. I'm I'm going to I'm going to ask you. Mm. Why did it take you so long to leave? Because basically at that point you was working for free. What was the point yeah. of continue to work for him? Because I was just like I said I I really liked truck driving and I was just trying to like give him a chance, you know, like, you know, but like I said, I mean, once after like when I came, I mean, with the lease owner operator, I'm like, okay, maybe it's fees involved so I can understand why I really didn't make no money. But then it's like when I came back as a company driver, then it's like I ain't really seeing nothing. Like I wasn't seeing nothing but like the fifty dollars that they was giving us each week. So then I'm just like, you know, and then like I said, I ended up trying to talk to the guy, like I'm like, something ain't adding up. Then he was just like, Well, I got other stuff I gotta take care of and that's when the truck broke down. And he was just basically indirectly telling me, like, I'm not gonna pay you. Like so I'm like, Okay, so y'all just not gonna pay me. So then the truck ended up breaking down. And while the truck getting repaired, they tell them not to give me my money. I mean, not to give, not to give me the keys. So you're down in Alabama right now. So this is the last leg of it. So let me stop you right there. Let me just ask you this, Ranky, right because if they gave you the keys back, you mean to tell me you would have continued to drive for them? No, I was done at that point. I was just gonna drive the truck to, back to the yard and just go home. Okay, the truck broke down in Alabama. You took it over to the shop while you're waiting. I'm, I'm assuming you're at a hotel. Did they cut? Did they cover your any of your expenses while you was down there? While the truck was in the shop? They on, they only gave me one night in the hotel. That's it. And that the truck wasn't even started to even get looked at yet. They were just like, well, you gonna have to call your fleet owner, the per you know, and have him cover for the rest because we're not gonna do it. And I was asking them even like if I could even sleep in the truck, and they were just like, no, nah, you can't sleep in the truck. I guess. And then that's when they was like, they told us, they told basically not to give you the keys back. So something was going on with the owner operator of the truck with the company per se. And they just pretty much just kind of just kicked you to the wayside. Being that you was driving for them as a company driver, they didn't offer you anything else or nothing. They didn't, they didn't offer nothing. They stopped answering their phones. Like, and I think it's because they didn't pay him and he just didn't want to lease the truck no more. So, I mean, they felt like, I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking, like I said, they thinking I was going to try to abandon the truck or like, I'm like, no, like I take the truck back to y'all, even though y'all haven't paid me, but at least let me get home. But they, they wasn't trying to do nothing. Like they just stopped answering the phones. Like, so Alabama, that's where you was at. Where was home? In Illinois. So you're down in Alabama. Your home is up in Illinois. They didn't think to offer you anything. So I'm I'm assuming they must have felt that the owner operator of the truck must have should have been responsible for you getting back home. Right. And that's what they was like that's what they told me like they were just like, "Well, you need to talk to him so uh he can help you out cuz we can't do anything." Okay. And yeah. Okay. So did we get in touch with the owner operator? Yeah, I so did. What did. So what did and the owner was, operator had to say about all of this? He was he was just saying no because he didn't even want to pay me. And then I kept trying to call him. He wasn't answering the phone. Like they just everybody just stopped answering the phone. I was just just stuck. Wow. Yeah. No kind of assistance from the company themselves, no. and nothing at all from the actual owner operator that you was up under. Yeah, nobody wanted to answer their phone. Okay, so how did you get home? I mean, I eventually, like, my family helped me out, but I was just pretty much just stuck down there until I had enough money to come up with to get home. How long you was down in Alabama before you, you made it back up to Illinois? For about three, four, yeah, about three, four days. Wow, sorry that that happened to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry that that happened to you. So, so driver, what would be the moral of your story? I mean, just do your research. Like, if, like you know, don't just think about the money. You know, just do your research. Do your research. If it don't fit right, if it don't, if you get any type of bad feeling, don't do it. I don't care what they're talking about. Like, you know, 
don't do it. Because these trucking companies, like I said, you got some good ones, but you got some bad ones. And they just, some of these bad ones, they just want to make money. They don't care. Like, you know, just do your research. Let me ask you this, because I, I know controversial companies, Super Eagle, always like to return phone calls to previous and former drivers. Have they re-reached out to you again to to try to bring you back on again? Yeah, they always try to call me. They always call me from different numbers. Oh, we're sorry about the past experience and all this. It's like, like no. Like when y'all pay me my money or do something, I would still wouldn't come back. But it's just like, you know, like no. They just they're not a good company. Like no. And what now? What's what's next for you? I mean, I'm still trying to get. I'm still trying to drive and stuff. You know. Um. But like I said, I'm just I'm doing my research now more. I ain't just jumping up and just going to a company just because like it may sound good or look good or like no nah. have you had any leads anybody in particular well, i mean i'm i've been like applying for some jobs and stuff um like um i'm waiting on a this trucking company now uh here back from them to see what's going on but uh yeah now do you think that you was a little bit naive to jump into leasing too soon well, now that, um, that you experienced it and you had a bad experience out of it would you take this opportunity as a learning experience to learn about the industry before you jump back into leasing yeah 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 for sure like i said i mean even though i mean like i said i know me like I like to learn new things. And I just, like I said, but it's like, no, nah, you, you know, even if you do know about it, you know, you got to, am I really comfortable with doing this? You know what I'm saying? You can't just be jumping into it easy, like, but, or think it's easy because it's quick, but nah. It's just unfortunate that a lot of you guys have to learn this stuff the hard way. It is a learning experience. At least you got something out of it. At least you got a takeaway that you can take with you to the next company. You have a little bit of inkling of what to do and what not to do. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully you'll get acclimated with the next company and you'll be like, oh, okay, well, I know what to do. I know what not to do and I'm, I'm good. So yeah. All right. Well, I, I do appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with them. I you you had me confused as a little bit, but yeah. but uh, but yeah. As I tell my audience, this is your story. So I appreciate you coming on. No, I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. I mean, like I said, it's a lot. I really couldn't go. In. I mean, like I said, as far as like detail with everything. I mean, but I do appreciate. It. Like I said, I mean, some things, like you said. I mean, I probably could have did better, you know, but at the same time, I mean, it's some things, you know, they know they did that was wrong. So, but, you know, it's a learning experience, so. Big G's got it locked, boy. Won't you let me out?